Hi there, it's Tracy Karanen from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint Camping Gnome. So another gnome in the gnome painting series that I've created. This one's a super fun one. Um, I did this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas that was painted black. I always say this about the canvases that are painted black. They're great for mess up paintings. You can just paint it over with a solid coat of black. I did this with just one coat of Mars black paint. So let's go over the colors that I use. There's a lot of colors in this one. We have unbleached titanium, cad orange hue, cad yellow light, cobalt blue, light green permanent, burnt sienna and burnt umber. You actually can just select one of those browns, but I like to mix those two browns together. Uh, Mars black, titanium white, and the brushes. So I used three brushes for this. This is a 12 bright brush. It's about a half inch wide flat brush, number four round and three quarter inch flat wash brush. I use a glass mason jar for water and a paper plate for palette. Let's go ahead and get started. So we are working with an 11 by 14 inch canvas that has been painted black. I used Mars black acrylic paint for this. And let's draw our hill line first. So this is going to help divide up our painting into the sky and ground. Let's measure about two and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas. And I'm just using a piece of chalk to kind of mark that. And then I drew a very kind of low hill. The height of the hill goes up about three inches. So you're really only going up like a half an inch. And then, so now you have your horizon line. And I'm loading my palette with the color cobalt blue and hooker's green hue permanent. This cobalt blue is a really pretty color and it shows up very nicely against a black background. Um, that's why I chose that color. So this is three quarter inch flat brush and I'm going to load my brush in water, tap it dry, load it in some cobalt blue. So what we want to do with this is we want to create this kind of blue glow just above the horizon line and we want it to fade up into the black and just sort of disappear without needing to add black to our palette to blend it. So we're going to start by doing kind of left and right curved strokes starting just above that chalk line. And we're gonna add a lot of blue at first, but then we're gonna let our brush kind of run out of paint and run dry so that it kind of just fades out and just turns into black for the rest of the sky. So I did kind of two coats of paint right there at the bottom, but right here, I'm just going to brush that transition and kind of bring this up a little bit further and see how it's just kind of running out, running dry. Um, the background is dry and this paint is wet, so it might be kind of tricky to figure out if it's fading or not because you can see where the wet paint is. But when this dries, you're not gonna notice that. So right there where it transitions out, what you can also do is take your brush and just kind of do these kind of strokes. So instead of going curved left and right, I'm kind of doing these like angled sort of scribbling that area, dragging some of that paint up into the black area. So you can see how it just kind of lets it run out. And then down here we have thicker, brighter blue. So that's it for the sky, super simple. Um, we're going to go and paint the ground next. So the ground is really easy. Let's go ahead and rinse our brush off. So get all that blue off the brush and we have hooker's green hue permanent on our palette, which is a dark green. You can use any dark green paint that you have available. It doesn't have to be that exact color. So rinse and wipe your brush and then grab your green. You need a generous amount. So the thing with this green is it's a little translucent and that's okay, especially with our black background. Uh, we don't need to apply multiple thick layers of paint here to cover all that black. In fact, if we have some black canvas still showing through this green, that's okay. That's kind of the effect that we wanna go for. So I'm doing curved strokes, painting this entire area, a little bit of water to my brush kind of thin that out a bit. So a relatively thin layer and you can see some of that black 
from the canvas is still showing through. Um, later on, we'll add some shadows depending on where all our objects are in this painting, um, but really this does not need to be solid at all. So there is our thin layer green paint applied to that entire hill area. Make sure your chalk line, your chalk line should be covered by now. There shouldn't be any chalk showing through or black line showing through. So that's it for the ground. You can go ahead and rinse the brush. And we are going to do the trees next. So I used two browns for the trees. I use burnt umber and burnt sienna. I like to mix those two browns together. One is like a super dark warm brown and one is a bright kind of reddish brown. Um, I mix them together, especially that reddish brown is going to help it show up better on the canvas. I am using a number 12 bright brush right now. So I'm going to take the two browns, mix both of them together on my palette. So I have about equal parts, both of those browns. I didn't mix them all the way. I just grabbed both of them, kind of mixed them a little bit. And I'm going to start with this tree over here on the left. So there's three trees. There's like a medium, a small, and a large. This is the medium sized tree. And started just a little bit below that hill line with a kind of thick trunk. If you want the measurement for that, it's about a half inch wide, well, maybe like three quarter inches wide for that trunk. And then turn your brush so you're using just the tip of it on its side, so vertically, to get your thinner line. So I'm going to split this into two thin lines. And the edge of your tree is a little bit wobbly, so I'm kind of wiggling my hand a little bit to get that edge to be kind of wavy, um, so it's not like a, a rectangle shape. It's, got a uh, uneven sort of edge to it. We can do a third branch here. So just using the tip of the brush and it goes off the canvas. So those thinner branches are a little bit thicker at first and then they go thin. And then we can do our second tree. So this tree is slightly behind it. So I'm gonna make the, the bottom of the tree trunk a little bit higher but it's thinner, it's smaller. But, so I'm gonna use mostly just the tip of the brush to create these thinner lines. They do split off into two and they go behind that first tree that we created. Just using that brush very lightly, the tip of it to create those smaller branches. And then I'll give that tree a little bit more shape down here at the bottom. But again, this trunk is thinner than our first trunk. If you feel more comfortable doing these trees with a round brush, you are definitely welcome to. If you like doing them with an angle brush, it's up to you what brush you wanna use. You don't have to use the exact same brush. Uh, with trees, I tend to use brushes interchangeably. Sometimes I'll use an angle brush, sometimes I'll use a round brush. It just kind of depends. Sometimes it just depends on my mood and what I feel like using. Um, so before these trees dry, let's add a little bit of highlight to them. We have, a lot of light going on in this painting, mostly from the fire. So our tree trunks that are gonna be facing, the side of the tree trunk that's gonna be facing the fire, those are gonna look like they're kind of glowing. So I made a really light brown on my palette, I'm just using the tip of the brush to kind of blend this lighter brown just on the edge of the tree. So just using the tip, just the edge of that, very kind of carefully painting sort of vertical strokes in there. And we want that to blend with the other brown. So that's why we are doing this before that brown dries. If you need to add darker brown in there to help get that to blend, you can do that. But just on the edge, we want that part to be the highlight. You can do it on some of the branches as well. So just on that edge, perhaps the moon might be casting some highlight on some of these branches. Let me paint that moon later on. And then you can take that, maybe just add a few down here, but for the most part, the left part of the tree needs to stay dark. 
And then we can do the exact same thing to our other tree. So let's get our light brown and add the little bits of light brown on the far right side. And again, little vertical strokes using just the tip of the brush. By doing those little vertical strokes, you actually also give that tree a little bit of texture. A few up here in the sky area. Helps get those branches to kind of show up a little bit better against the black canvas. And there's our two trees. And we have a large tree that's on the right. So this tree, the placement is kind of important for this. It's about the same level as the tree on the left. Um, but because our gnome is going to be laying against it, we want to make sure that we position it right. So that one I did about an inch and a half on the bottom of the canvas. And that trunk is really wide. It's about two inches wide. You want to kind of do the same technique using the two browns. Do your trunk. It's a very wide trunk. It's two inches wide and you just want to take your time with your brush vertical strokes <clears throat> going up and then your tree trunk gets smaller, thinner as it goes up and then this one's going to split as well. So use the tip of the brush to split that tree up into, we're gonna do three main branches. You can always add smaller branches. So you just kind of sketch out with the paint that and then you can go in and add more shape if needed on the edges of the trunk and more detail. And this one I'll split again. So this one has two smaller branches. So the branches are thicker at the bottom and then thinner towards the edges. They go all the way to the edge of the canvas. And then we can do the same highlighting thing, only this time the highlight is on the left side of this tree. But same technique, mixing that lighter brown on your palette using the white making just the edge of that tree brighter and the far right part of the tree is darker. Loosely add some vertical strokes in the middle as well. That gives your tree a little bit of texture. Just using the tip of the brush. So those branches, I did the, the little highlight just on the left side of each of the branches, but left the right side dark. Added another few little branches in there and there's our large tree. I'm going to add a little bit more of this lighter color right here. So this is going to make it look like that branch is in front and then right here on the right side of this branch helps that color stand out a little bit better against the black background. few more kind of vertical strokes in there but that's it I'm gonna leave it alone for now we can add uh, we can add our leaves in our tree later on so we got to let that brown dry so while that's drying we can do the stars and this is a super easy step so we could just use our round brush pinch the bristles load it in the white and do little dots or you can turn your brush over and stamp it. So I'm using the back of the paintbrush this time instead of the actual bristles and I'm loading that in the titanium white and I'm stamping each of the little star dots kind of all throughout the sky. So as I'm doing this I'm kind of changing the pressure of the brush so that some of the dots are larger, some are smaller, so you can make them smaller just by barely pressing it and then make them larger by pressing harder, loading more paint on the tip of the brush. Um, the point is just to create the illusion of stars in the sky. So we have brighter ones, smaller ones, larger, dimmer, and they're kind of scattered all throughout. If you want, you can do constellations. I just did random dots.
And then we can do the crescent moon. So for the moon, I drew it first. This is a chalk pencil. You can use any pencil or you can use a piece of chalk that we used earlier. And you're just gonna draw the moon. Mine, I want to go behind this branch over here. So I painted it over and then I had to repaint part of that branch, but that's okay. So just draw your little moon wherever you want it. If you wanna do a full moon, you can do a full circle. You can do no moon in the sky. And then using the number four round brush and titanium white, you're just gonna paint that in. Solid coat of white. Any leftover chalk lines can be erased after this moon dries. So if we need to, we can go ahead and let that dry and then erase it. And then we can paint part of our branch that might have been painted over. So I'm gonna make this brown again. It doesn't have to be a, the exact same shade of brown and then I'm going to repaint this branch to make it look like that moon is behind the branch. The next thing I'm going to do is paint the leaves in the tree. So with this I'm going to use a three-quarter flat brush and some of the hooker's green hue permanent. So I have more of that color on my palette. I'm going to use the tip of the brush to stamp these leaves. So I'm just dabbing the very, very tip of that brush to create that leaf texture. All of this is kind of high up in the canvas, mostly on the edge. I don't want to cover all the branches. Just gonna do a few little clusters of green kind of scattered throughout the top area of the tree. Some of this might have to overlap the moon a little bit so go a little bit over here. I didn't want to cover too much of the moon. And then we can do like another layer down here. If we want, we can highlight some of these. So adding just kind of like what we did with the brown, but we add a little bit of white to the green. Um, you don't want to use pure white for this, but you want it to make it look like a really, really light green. And you just take that. And I did the lighter colors on the bottom edges of the leaves and left the top parts super dark. So we have a little bit of color variation in our leaves. When we're done, with the tree, we are going to move along and draw our gnome and fire. So there's a traceable for this. And if you are using the traceable, I recommend the white graphite paper for transferring, or you can rub chalk on the back of the tracer. If you're drawing this with me, I recommend using this white chalk drawing pencil. It helps you get those thinner lines with the white color instead of just using a regular pencil that's harder to see, but you can use either or. And we're gonna start by drawing the gnome, the nose of the gnome. So I am approximately four inches from the bottom of the canvas and about two and a half inches towards the left. And I'm gonna draw his, no, his nose. And the nose is about an inch and a quarter wide by about three quarter inches high. 
that does not have to be exact. I like to throw those measurements out just to kind of help you with the drawing. Uh, the nose, notice how it's like slightly angled because we're making this gnome kind of leaning against the tree. So his nose would be kind of slightly angled upwards towards the left. And then we can do his hat. So I'm just gonna kind of lightly sketch that. So there's the bottom part of that hat that kind of hugs the nose and it goes down all the way to the tree. So that's the bottom portion of his hat. And I'm gonna kind of continue this line. So it's kind of a shape, it's kind of curvy, it goes to the end of the tree. And notice how that's angled as well. It's gonna be angled upwards because of how he's sitting. And I'm gonna do his hat. So I'm gonna go up about two and a half inches upwards, kind of hugs the very edge of that tree. And then the tip of the hat goes down. This one's gonna be hard to see right here because it's light color, it gets light color. But it's got a pointed hat that points down. So there's the top part of him, and then we can start sketching his beard. So the beard starts here on the left side of his hat. It's about right here. Attaches to the left part of the nose. And then we're going to kind of sketch it so it goes all the way to the ground level where he would be sitting. Kind of points to the left. The beard's a little bit kind of hanging on the ground. We can do the right side of the beard. So it goes all the way where that tree is. And then sketching it, it goes flat down here because it's just kind of laying on the ground. And we'll have his feet kind of sticking out too. But for now, we just see the beard. And then I'm going to draw his arm that's over here on the right. So his arm's just kind of resting on the ground on his side. We see just his sleeve and his little mitten hand that kind of overlaps his beard. And he has another little mitten hand that's going up like this. He's going to be holding the stick with the marshmallow and we see part of his sleeve that gets attached to the beard. The nice thing about these gnome paintings is that the beard covers almost everything. So all we have to do is draw the little arms and legs sticking out, but everything else covered by the beard. And I did the, the stick. So he's holding the stick, it kind of has the three little prongs on it and the shoes. The shoe part's a little bit awkward because of how he's sitting and how his beard is going to be just kind of draped over his shoes a little bit. We don't see any of his legs. We just see the bottom of his shoes. So I did two sort of kidney bean shapes where the arch is on the inner part. And that's all we need for the drawing of the gnome. We can do the little marshmallow, little oval shape and turn that into kind of in a rectangular shape that's attached to the stick. And then we can start sketching out this fire. Lower sort of left area. We can draw the flame. So I did the flame first instead of the sticks on the bottom. I felt, felt that was a little bit easier. So I just sketched out the flame. It kind of goes a little bit narrower to the middle part. It goes to kind of a point in the middle. And then we can do the wood pieces. So this one, I did like a little diagonal line, an oval, and then turned that into a shape. Her beard kind of got in the way, so I had to kind of adjust the placement of the sticks. This one back this way, so it makes like a little X. I'm going to adjust this entire piece so it's more angled downwards like this.
The nice thing about these chalk pencils is they erase easily and if you paint over it, it's not going to show through the paint and it will erase as long as you haven't painted over any parts. It would still erase after the painting is completely done. We're going to go ahead and paint our gnome and so this is just kind of the order that I did it in. I started with the hat this time. So this is light green permanent and titanium white. I'm going to mix equal parts of those, the green and the white. It's going to make a pretty light green color. And this should show up relatively bright against a dark background because we added that white in there. We don't need to prime anything with white first. We can just mix our white into that green and it will be very opaque and show up against the dark. So with this hat, I want it to be lighter on the left where that light from the fire will be hitting it and a little bit darker on the right. So I started with lighter color and then I blended in darker color on the right and I'm filling his hat in with curved strokes. So that entire sort of cone shape of the hat is all curved strokes. And I'm doing blending on the canvas. So load your brush in that lighter green and white on the left. Load your brush in the darker green. You don't have to rinse your brush when you reload. The darker green over here on the right. And just kind of drag it inwards. The curved strokes is going to give that hat that kind of 3D look, three-dimensional look. Give it some form. So this part of the hat here in the far right that's folded over and against the tree, this is all that darker green. Still a little bit of white on my brush and that's okay. This part is darker than the rest of the hat. And this part's lighter. The front, or front part and then the folded part is kind of shadowy and in the back kind of look like that's more connected and then right here just filling in the rest of that bottom part of his hat if you want you could make that bottom part of the hat like a different color if you want to add patterns or designs on the hat you're welcome to Let's go ahead and rinse all that green off the brush and we're gonna do the nose next. So for the nose, you need unbleached titanium and the color burnt sienna on your palette. Go ahead and load your brush in the water. I'm gonna pinch the bristles because I'm painting something small next. I'm gonna grab this burnt sienna. I'm gonna paint the nose dark first. So just painting that oval solid coat of that burnt sienna color. And then before that dries, grab the unbleached titanium and start filling that in. That's gonna blend with your burnt sienna. We want to make our nose darker on the outer parts and lighter in the middle. So I'm adding that burnt sienna in the center, but in the middle part, a little bit more of that unbleached titanium. So it's lighter in the middle and darker on the outer parts. It's going to give your nose that sort of 3D form. And then you can do your hands the same combination of the unbleached titanium and burnt sienna. I just painted those in with whatever color was left on my brush. So both of those hands get painted in. We are going to paint the beard next, and that is also done with the number four round brush. So go ahead and rinse the color that you have on your brush off your brush, and let's have some Mars black on our palette, and you'll need titanium white if you need to freshen up some of your white. So we're gonna start by making kind of a medium gray color. So I'm gonna mix about equal parts black and white together. 
So one part white, one part black. That's gonna give you this medium gray color. It should look dark. We're gonna start dark and then work our way up to light in this. So as we're painting this beard in, we wanna kind of pay attention to the direction of the hairs. So if we're painting on the right side of the beard, our hairs are just kind of flowing and going towards the center. If we're painting on the left side of the beard, our hairs are flowing and going to the center, but the opposite direction. So your curved strokes, and then like it all goes towards the center. So these strokes kind of contour around the hand and then when we get to the foot, we're gonna have those kind of curve around the top part of his foot. So these curve down, meet in the center. It curves around the foot. So you can see how it makes it look like that beard is just kind of hanging over the feet. And then down here, we can add more of the beard. So there's our first layer. It's the darker layer. And we're going to go in and add some lighter color next. So a little bit more white on our brush. This should not be pure white. It should just be like three shades lighter than what we just did. But we're just going to go in, little tiny strokes and add more of this texture. So in the left part of our beard, we need that to be lighter because that's facing the fire. The fire would be highlighting that more. And then we're just doing more contouring strokes. Again, all the little beard textures meet in the center very loosely. So there's not a lot of paint on my brush when I do this. I'm just letting that tip of the round brush barely skid the canvas. We need a very light hand for this. And the direction of the strokes go pretty much in the same direction that we did with the darker gray. This is just highlighting it. So a few more lighter strokes over here on the left and notice how I did the edge of the beard over here on the left it did a few just kind of sticking out on the sides you can do it over here too on the right but we are going to paint the sleeve so we don't really we can go back and do texturing later after we paint the sleeve so let's go ahead and leave this for now. Again, we can add more detail later, but let's get those shoes painted in next and the sleeves. So I'll rinse the round brush off and dry it and then load it into the cobalt blue. If you're changing the color of this, you can do it a different color other than cobalt blue. You can do it green or whatever color you want. Something that would stand out against the tree trunk. So I wouldn't do brown. And so just painting that in solid. And before that dries, let's grab a little bit of white and blend that white in there on the left part. Gives it a little bit of highlight. Add more blue to blend that back in. And then we can paint our other sleeve. There's not a lot of sleeves showing here. If we need to paint over part of the beard, we can, and then we can go back and repaint that as well. Rinse your brush and grab your Mars Black to paint the bottom of the shoes. So the first layer of these shoes, we have solid black so we don't have to worry about any other color right now just paint those two shapes now what I did do was I painted these shoes but I actually made them go down just a little bit further so you can see how I'm painting outside of my chalk line I made the shoes a little bit lower than how I drew them so essentially I made the shoes a little bit bigger if you use the traceable you don't necessarily have to do that I just adjusted my drawing then without rinsing the brush, a little bit of titanium white on the tip of the brush. And let's do 
the far right edge of both of those shoes. So see how that blended and it turned to kind of a light gray on the canvas. That's kind of what we wanted. And then the heel, did a little kind of right angle line on the bottom. And then the top part of the shoe, a little kind of curved line at the top. So it looks like the light from the fire is kind of reflecting the bottom part of the shoe, but we don't see any other detail other than that. And this next step is optional. I'm gonna add more lights and darks in the beard, but if you like the way the beard looks, the texture and everything, you don't have to mess with it or do anything else with it. Um, so rinsed my brush, grabbed that medium gray again, I'm just going to go in and kind of add a few more lighter strokes in here, especially right here. So the edging, now that I painted the sleeve, I did some of the edging that goes off the side of the sleeve and just kind of contouring strokes that go around and kind of over his shoes. And then I went back and did the same thing with the dark color. Just want to be really careful not to over blend the color. A little bit of dark right there under his nose. Really small strokes. Make that a little bit shadowy under the nose. A little bit under the hat as well. And a loose outlining under the hat. And then that's it for the beard. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. But what I am going to do next is grab the black, still using the round brush, I'm going to do some shadowing. So a little bit of um, very, very loose left and right strokes using the black. So I did under the shoes, under the hand. So this area is already really dark because of that green, but I'm just very loosely, almost dry brush style. You don't want to have a lot of um, like pure 100% black. You want it to be very kind of loose. We're not trying to cover up all that green. We're just trying to create some shadowy texture in the lower right area under the gnome. So then I'm going to add a little bit more highlight to the nose and the hands. So the upper left part of the nose, did another layer of unbleached titanium and actually I'm gonna add white into this. So that's white I'm loading onto my brush just to make a little bit more brightness over here on the left. Little curve right there, upper left area. So that part is super bright. And then we can do a little highlight on the left part of his hand and this one as well, a little bit on the thumb. And then next, let's do the fire. So the fire is done in multiple layers, starting with just orange. So go ahead and we'll be using the number four round brush for that as well. So rinse your brush off and then load Ked Orange Hue onto your palette. We're gonna start with just this color and then we'll be adding lighter and lighter color in the center of the fire to make it bright. So a clean, dry, number four round brush. Grab your orange and you want to paint the entire shape of the fire orange. So everything gets painted in orange at this point. So you will notice this orange, it's bright, but it's not giving 100% coverage and that's okay. We're gonna kind of use that idea to our advantage here because we're gonna do layers of lighter color in the center. So this part, the fire is gonna be slightly darker and see-through. So we only need one coat of orange. Don't worry that there's dark still showing through. So um, doing the edges of the fire. So these are kind of curved contouring strokes of color. And then let's load cadmium yellow light onto our palette. And we don't have to wait for this to dry to do this step. So you're basically taking that yellow and doing little curved strokes in the center part of your fire. So you're forming kind of another flame shape inside this first flame shape 
but don't go too far to the edge because we want the edge to be that orange color that's darker. So you created a brighter glow in the center, added a little bit more yellow in the center of that. And you can see how that made it look even brighter. And then go in with the white and this really makes it look bright. So adding a little bit of white on the tip of the brush and just creating, I almost just did dots in the center because that's how small that middle flame piece was. Super bright and white right there in the center and on the bottom of that fire. Creates that realistic look for the fire. Little tiny dots right in the center. And there's our fire. We can go ahead and rinse the brush and we can work on the, the log next. So we need some burnt sienna. So you can use the burnt sienna and the burnt umber on your palette. Mix the white in with either of the browns, doesn't matter which one, or you can use both. And let's just kind of outline the shape of that log. And then we can fill it in. So you want your strokes to go diagonally in the direction of that log. So you want to create this look that it's like wood. So we want to use like different variations of that brown. And to vary that brown, we can use white and black to vary it. And we can even use some of that unbleached titanium color as well. So I'm going to paint the center or that oval piece with a little bit of that unbleached titanium and brown. So that piece is lighter. And then we can go in and just do a little diagonal strokes, gently blending that brown, give it that faux wood look. And then we can use some black. Black will darken that brown. Can go in there and do a few little strokes with the black color and let that kind of blend in with the rest. So it's almost like this calico color of different browns and light brown, dark brown, medium brown. And then we can do our logs that are kind of in the back. Those are kind of hidden. And if they're not visible, that's okay. Kind of outline that oval piece, a few more little line strokes in there. But again, the trick is just to not over blend it. You just have a variety of browns with those kind of diagonal strokes. I'm gonna rinse and dry and kind of add more flame over here that overlaps our wood pieces a little bit more, so just the orange. I'm just taking that and kind of extending the flame outwards a little bit, but not really messing with the center part. So that part of the flame ended up overlapping some of the back wood pieces. And if we need to, I can grab a little bit of yellow, kind of add help with that transition of that orange to that bright yellow, but I don't really want to mess with that center part that's really bright and white. So then let's rinse and dry and let's go ahead and paint the stick our gnome is holding as well as the marshmallow. So this I'm just going to use whatever brown is on my palette right now. It doesn't really matter. So this is the burnt sienna burnt umber, a little bit of white. You'll need that little bit of white to get that to show up, especially if that dark, the brown is dark and the background is dark. A little bit of white will help that show up. But if you need to adjust that brown to be darker, you are welcome to do it that way. It just depends on the color of the beard and how it's contrasting. So there's the stick. And then we can paint the little marshmallow in. Use some fresh white for this. I'm gonna pinch my bristles because I'm gonna know, I know I'm gonna paint something small. So we have the little marshmallow shape. So outlining, curved shape. Little bit of black in there to make that gray. So the, the top flat part of the marshmallow is gray. And then this far right edge, we can 
outline that just a little bit right here with that dark gray color. And then a little bit of outlining on the top part of the oval. This next step is optional. I am going to take my flat brush. I'm going to add a little bit of texture in the ground area. So set my round brush aside and grab the 12 bright brush, which is the flat brush. I'm going to grab green on my brush, a little bit of that light green color as well. So this will stand out. So this is kind of like what we did in the trees earlier, only I'm using a smaller flat brush and I'm just tapping it in this area to create some texture on the ground. This is entirely optional. You don't have to do this step. So I'm just tapping this kind of all throughout. So it creates a little variation of color, texture in the ground area. Then I'm going to do the same exact thing, but with black. So rinse the brush, kind of tap it dry and load it into Mars black. I'm gonna do the same thing, only this is dark. So this is kind of giving me some shadow in this area. So just kind of tapping it throughout. So below the trees, be a little bit of shadow kind of all scattered throughout. We have the fire going, so it's casting light kind of randomly throughout the land area, but we still have some shadowy areas as well. Next, I'm going to paint the little smoke that's coming up from the fire. So this is the number four round brush and I'm doing titanium white. You only want a very, very small amount of paint on your brush and you're just gonna lightly paint this little smoke trail we can do two if we want. Up from the flame, just kind of disappears when it hits the moon area, but very, very lightly, not a thick stroke at all, not thick paint, just very translucent and see-through. A little bit more white right there in that center. Next, we can sketch a little lantern. So what's a camping painting without a lantern? Um, I'm going to use that chalk pencil again to draw this lantern. So let's start over here. So we're in front of our tree to the right of his hand and a little oval shape for the actual glass piece. And then a little kind of curvy square piece and another curve for the handle. We can do like a trapezoid shape for the base. And then the two little side pieces, curve line and curve line that connects the base to that top piece. And then we can paint this in. So let's start by using a clean, dry number four round brush in the color Cad Yellow Light. So load your round brush in the yellow and let's paint the entire glass area a solid coat of that yellow. So just this part right here. You can do this in curved strokes to kind of give that more of a, of a shape like a three-dimensional shape. And then before this dries, we're gonna grab titanium white, so a little bit of white on your brush. And just in the center of that, we're gonna add our white. I'm gonna get some fresh titanium white here. Make sure that this is nice and bright. So just in the center, we're just adding a little bit of white circle area, we can blend that outwards, but that's gonna create that glowing look to the lantern. Then let's rinse our number four round brush off and let's grab our Mars Black. So I'm gonna get some fresh Mars Black for this. Grab the number four round brush, pinch the bristles because I'm gonna paint something small, load 
just the tip in the black. So let's paint that top little square piece with rounded corners, the bottom trapezoid piece that also has rounded corners. We can paint the side pieces. and that top little circle piece. So before this dries, let's go ahead and add white into it. So without rinsing the brush, add a little bit of white to the tip of your brush. And on the left side of this trapezoid piece, I'm just gonna add some white, kinda drag it in and blend it. Right here too, on the left side, a little bit of white. And blend it in. So that gives that little bit more of a bright sort of highlight look to the lantern. And I'm gonna let this dry before doing one more detail to the lantern. Um, if your the rest of your painting is dry and you have leftover chalk marks, you can get a regular eraser and erase any leftover chalk lines that might be still showing so I had some leftover lines on the fire as well as the gnome. And then we can, if this is dry enough, we can take our black and go back to the lantern and do like a little X. So like in the upper left area to the up lower right, so a little curve. And then on the opposite way, so that forms like a little X. The rest of this painting really is just final touch up. So I decided to add more stars in the sky and I did that with the back of the paintbrush. I also did a few little kind of white dots over here around the fire area for like little sparks kind of flickering up. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint Camping Gnome. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.